Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is Probing Paul episode number three, or at least the third of my Q&A monthly videos that I'm doing. So every month I answer some questions that you guys ask. This month I will be responding mostly to questions that were asked in last month's video. This is last month's video where I showed the months before that's video. If I keep doing this, it will eventually like, it'll go down to near infinity, I imagine, depending on how many of these I do. Anyway, thanks for all the feedback and, and all that good stuff on the last video. Appreciate that, you guys. And uh, I'm back to answer some more questions. So let's get right into it, starting off with uh, this one. No, that's the headline question, but we have one actually that was right before that, uh, which is from Finn Jake. And he said, would the cards you put on the shelf get dusty over the time? This is, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, he's talking about the shelf behind me. The answer would be yes, they do. But I have this. Look, it's a feather duster. This is an ostrich feather duster, which means it's, it's very soft. Although it's best to, you know, clean the dust out of it after you use it. Uh, I got this because, you know, lots of stuff back here and I need a quick and easy way to clean it and a feather duster just works great. Now granted, if you have a, gra a graphics card that's been in use for a while, it's going to have dust kind of caked up in there and on the fins. But if it's just sitting out, you know, you just kind of go over the top, give a little dusting off and then you're good to go. So that's my solution for that. Anyway, next question here is from Sufyan Khan who says, is it worth waiting for AMD Zen or should I get an Intel CPU for gaming? That's a very good question. This is the, this is like the ultimate question, the eternal question. Should I buy new hardware now? Should I wait to upgrade in the future? And there's no direct answer for it. Um, what I would ask you to answer this question for yourself is, do you have a computer that you're using right now for gaming, if gaming is what you want to do? And is it living up to your expectations? Is it passable you know there's a lot of times a system can get two three years old and it can still do everything that a brand new system would do but it just does it a little bit slower so it all depends on how patient you are i guess to some degree how accepting you are of not having access to the newer technology like m.2 ssds and nvme support and that kind of thing depending on what system you're current, currently using of course and then you also have that forward-looking potential or, or, or factor here which is that AMD Zen is something that we know is going to happen. It should happen this year at some point. We're expecting it in the second half of the year. So that's at least three months, but probably longer than that uh, until we actually see an actual AMD Zen CPU that you can buy and install in a system. So you have that maybe time that's like, well, are you going to be waiting four months or are you going to be waiting till December? We don't really know. And AMD isn't necessarily the best at always sticking to their release dates for certain products. Like they just came out with a Radeon Pro Duo and that was supposed to come out in December. And that was after being pushed back from like Q3 last year. So hardware schedules can get pushed back. Uh, waiting can be frustrating. So all that taken into consideration, it's obviously going to be up to you whether or not you should invest or not. But hey, if you can't live with the system you have right now, then just upgrade. Just upgrade and tell yourself, you know what, in three, six months, this is gonna be supplanted by something else that's newer and faster, but hey, that always happens. That will not not happen regardless of what you buy. So if you can sort of tell yourself that and live with it, then uh, it, it will give you a little bit more confidence to go ahead and buy right now. That said, and I know this is another future looking thing, Intel should be launching uh, Kaby Lake or Kaby Lake uh, in June. We're expecting that in June, so that's another, I guess, factor to throw in there to make this an even more confusing de decision for you. Next question here is from Raymar Lunardi, and sorry, these are all pixelated. I just screen capped them. Uh, what kind of camera do you use? A good question. I've answered this once or twice before, but uh, the first answer would be the Panasonic Lumix GH4, DMC GH4. This is it right here. Um, the price has come down a little bit, but if you buy it new, you can get it for about $1,300. I just really like this camera because it's got features uh, specifically for video that are really nice, like the flip out screen so you can flip around and be able to see yourself. It's got like an audio jack input, which is just something that you really need. It's got an HDMI out. I'm using that to record right now so that it's got a clean HDMI out that's accepted by lots of different capture cards so you can use it to record directly which is super helpful. I've actually just ordered a new one of these. I'm going to have two of them to assist with my workflow and specifically for doing live streams I wanted to have a better image quality of the live streams all around and my other camera that I use right now which I 
Swear to God, I brought out here and now it's completely disappeared. I'm blind, it's right here. Okay, this is my Lumix LX100, which actually has also has a Micro Ford's third, for third sensor. And really nice, it's a fixed lens, but it is a very nice uh, compound lens that does really nice close-ups. And I would just use this for what I bought the second GH4 from, but what these camera companies seem to like doing is that they take their kind of prosumer level point and shoots that are kind of like this that cost eight hundred two thousand dollars and they cut out two like really really important features that video uh, production people would want one is that discrete audio jack in so you can do uh, audio from a different source besides the built-in speakers and then uh, the second thing uh, granted you can do audio from a different source you just have to sync it up later in post but that's annoying the second thing is that clean HDMI out I thought this was gonna have it originally when I got it but the HDMI out on this is only for watching recorded movies to be played back, which is all of completely useless for me. So for that reason, I got another GH4. Uh, I'm looking forward to it arriving soon. I got it on eBay for uh, nine, $940, I think. Yeah, I got it used. I was okay with that. All right, here we go. Next question. This one is from Adam Ricard. He's asking, do you have giveaways, basically, besides reviews? And the answer here would be yes. Yes, I do. Here's a bunch of giveaways. I searched my channel for giveaways. So I wanted to point out this one in particular, the one that's right at the top, because we're doing another one just like this uh, next month in April. But I've done, like I did a $100,000 giveaway where I gave away a full computer. I mean, 100,000 subscriber giveaway, not $100,000. Uh, and then I also gave away, for 200,000 subscribers, I gave away G GTX 980. Yeah, I've done some giveaways. I don't like to do them all the time. Um, but yeah, again, we're doing a really, really similar one to this one uh, coming up in about a month. It is the same people. It's me, Kyle, Jay, and uh, Hardware Connects, uh, Dimitri. And um, yeah, it's going to be great. You can win $1,000. You win a Define Nano S and uh, some other stuff too. I hope I'm not spoiling it by telling you guys early. But yeah, it's a giveaway and that'll be in the uh, first or second week of April, I think. So yeah. Another question here, uh, and this one's sort of associated, asked from Sween92, what's your recommendation for an affordable microphone, lav or Yeti style, for an aspiring content creator? Um, well, you actually pointed to one that I would definitely recommend, even though I don't have one and use it personally, which is a Yeti. Um, Yetis are just, they, they do a really good job. Plugs in via USB, really easy to use, sits on the desk, has a pretty decent stand built in with some isolation, so you know you don't get too much noise if you bang on the desk or that kind of thing. Um, I use a few different audio solutions, so uh, if you're a content creator, obviously you're going to want maybe better audio for a camera. So this is a Rode VideoMic, this is a VideoMic Pro. Uh, I find this to be very convenient to pop on top of a DSLR. Plugs in if you have an 8th inch audio input on your DSLR. And this will just give you much better audio and much more directional audio, because if you're pointing it at your subject, and your subject within 5 to 12 15 feet in front of the camera, it'll pick them up really nice. It's directional though, you gotta point it at them. And then you only have the option of plugging it in via this little eighth inch jack. So um, another option, well, I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm using right now. And this is, since I have two of these, this one would normally be up there, but I pulled it off. This is another Monoprice product. This is a, what is this? This is their large diaphragm condenser mic, which if you wanna find it, it's just 600-800. 600-800 is the uh, model of this. And this is nice because it's XLR. So I use this along with a soundboard. This does need power, but uh, for 80 to 100 bucks, depending on whether it's on sale or not, the sound you get on this is, is really quite nice. I mean, I have a lot of echo in this room and it still does a pretty good job. I have it like right here, right? Right in front of my face, but just out of the camera's reach. This also gives you like a shock mount and that kind of thing. So you need to drop 80 to 100 bucks on this and then you definitely need a soundboard since you need power for this. So you're probably gonna spend another 50 to 100. I don't know uh, how budget or affordable affordable you mean by um, by affordable. So that tends to vary depending on who you are. Um, the last thing I will, I will show you guys here is a audio solution that I used for the first several years that I was doing YouTube, which is a Zoom H1. This is about $100. And uh, the nice thing about this is it's portable for one, and it's also pretty versatile. So um, it's it's still a hundred bucks. Apparently the price has not gone down, although I've seen it cheaper here and there if you can find it on sale. It's got pretty nice built-in mics. So as long as you have it fairly close to your face as you're talking, uh, it picks up pretty good audio. Um, it's got built-in controls here so you can turn the volume up and down and all that good stuff. Battery powered, so double A battery and that lasts quite a long time with just a single double A can record directly to the device itself via micro SD cards. It has a microphone input, so you could connect it up 
to like a lav mic, if you have a right lav mic that doesn't need phantom power, you could plug it in here and use this as a digital audio recording device if you're not using the microphones. It's also got a line out, so you can use that to actually put some headphones on and record what's going on inside there and everything. Again, it's 100 bucks, and you get a lot of features in here. It's not like the best audio quality, but as long as you can keep it pretty close to your face or the subject or whatever you're talking to, I find it does a great a great job. I even got this little uh, this little bracket. I don't even know this shock mount. I got this shock mount as well, which is not made exactly for this, but um, this allows you to even take it and use it kind of like the same way that I would with the Rode video mic, which is to mount on top of a DSLR or something like that. And um, yeah, speaking of microphones, my mic's probably picking up a, a train rolling by right now. Let's give it a second. We'll come back. That was a kind of long-ass train, but hey, it did go by faster than when I had to wait for my computer to update to Windows 10, which it did automatically right before I started recording my, my, my probe and Paul for today. Isn't that fun? Also, the dogs are in the other room. Speaking of dogs, wait, this is the wrong question. Next question. From where does the excellent in my intros come from? Well, I'm not going to tell you guys directly, but maybe someone in chat knows. And I will also say that there's a big hint staring, in, staring you right in the face right now. Until it is. I'll, I'll leave that. All right, that's, that's, my, that's my mystery. Um, all right, another actual tech question. This is from Michael Webb. Uh, he's got a memory question. He says he has a Skylake 6700K. G1 gaming uh, motherboard sets from Gigabyte, and it won't let him use all four memory sticks. He says only two work. Uh, he has eight gigs in the machine, so he's got a 4x4 four four gig kit, and it's a G-Skill 3200 hertz kit. Any ideas, ideas why it's only letting you have two sticks work? Okay, Michael, uh, just a few things that you should check out here. One is there is a chance that your motherboard is simply defective and that one of your memory channels isn't working properly. Uh, two would be that your motherboard is set to use XMP mode. If your motherboard is set to use XMP, then as you're booting up, it's automatically trying to run that memory at 3200 uh mega transfers per second per second to be specific and it might not be able to do that your processor might not be able to do that your processor is where the memory controller is and if its memory controller can't run at that speed then you can't run that memory at that speed so definitely try um, checking to make sure you have if XMP is on or off Try running the memory at uh, the default speed for Skylake, which would be 2133. And then maybe instead of enabling XMP, try ramping up from there and seeing if, if that does it. By and large, you just need to test everything at default speeds and see if all four sticks are recognized. Um, if it's not there running at default speeds, then chances are you got a motherboard problem. Maybe a CPU problem, but more likely the motherboard. Um, what you're really gonna wanna do is find a repair shop or something like that that you can bring the equipment into so they can test each component individually in working systems, like the CPU in a known working motherboard, the memory in a known working system, uh, just to pinpoint exactly where you've got a uh, hardware failure if you are dealing with a hardware failure and it's not just the fact that your memory, your CPU can't handle that speed. Again, 3200 mega, mega transfers per second for DDR4 is an overclock speed. Uh, Intel only actually guarantees you'll be able to run at uh, at what 2133 is the default. So anyway, moving along from Alex Schwantes, we have uh, that's Robo Hazard by the way. We have a very important question. I've asked, I've been asked this a lot, and thankfully yes, I do have a PO box now, and here it is. I've only shared it with a couple people so far, and I'm sharing it with you guys here on Probing Paul here towards the end of the show. PO box 4325 Diamond Bar, California. So if you guys want to send me anything that's legal to be sent through U.S. mail. And hopefully not like huge or useless. Make it make it useful, or at least I don't know. Food? No, don't send food unless it's fudge. We might be getting some fudge in the mail soon. Okay, uh, let's move on to the last bit of the show here, which is going to be the Twitter segment. And I didn't ask for questions on Twitter today. I asked people to come up with a cool backstory for uh, Hero's Scar. So Hero is our new little dog. Uh, I say little, but that's not true. He's actually 85 pound Mastiff Pitbull mix and uh, he's got this, he came from the, the from uh, shelter, we, we got him from rescue shelter, he's about seven years old and uh, he has some pretty, his ears are cropped pretty pretty heinously, we don't really approve of that but you know, he's, he's amazingly cute, super friendly. Anyway, he's got the scar on his snout right here and it's very mysterious. He looks, he looks like a real tough do dog so I'm just gonna go down the line here and see what people had to say about this. Timmy said, uh, fighting off a mob of ninja kittens. Zane said, an entire bushel of ninjas. 
Were they ninja kittens? I don't know. Paul says ninja cats. So obviously there's ninjas of some kind, possibly the feline variety involved here. Uh, got it when the Fire Nation attacked from Mike. I think that's a that's a Last Airbender reference, I believe. I'm not familiar with that. Sorry. Uh, here was a retired samurai dog. He lost his ears and got a, got his scar after a vicious sword. Obviously he's all right. So Hero is. I mean, it's a Japanese name, so I guess that's why we're getting the ninja side of it. Shaving accident. That's a possibility. Breaking out of the crate. He did escape from his crate the other day using his massive strength, and then he went and laid down on the couch because he just <laughs> wanted to lay down on the couch instead of the crate. He used to be a pirate and fought off a group of ninjas. Now we're introducing pirates to this. All right, uh, gnawing through a chain link fence, perhaps? Any of those? To escape from the kennel. Dog Shawshank Redemption. I can imagine him standing out in the rain, to pouring down freedom, all that. Got into a fight with YouTube execs on, <laughs> on Kyle's behalf. That's a good one. We need some sharks in this story somehow. Uh, pulled the bumper off of a truck. That's how he did it. Doggy kryptonite treats as he fought giant ro cat robots from outer space. Were they ninja cat robots? Could be. Defending a GT740 from a big nasty bully GTX 660. There's a fan blade strike during an epic mid-air battle. I like that. I like the inclusion of the, the actual hardware there. Secret ninja, obviously. When in doubt, could be aliens uh, fighting alongside the humans against Sauron. All right. Also the elves and all free folk. Dwarves. Um, he, he got shot in the work. He got shot in the war bar fight with a shark. This would be a pretty fun bar to be a part of. Uh, Dave put a... He did a whole story here. Adopted by this man, Tito Leibowitz. He's a small-time gun runner and a pit bull fighter promoter. Born to a three-legged bitch of a mother, he was always ashamed of this man. Uh, ashamed of this man. Wait, ashamed of this. And then right after... Oh, I completely, I completely read it. First, first of all, to understand what happened to here, you got to understand who Hero the Dog was. Now here, anyway, th thank you, Dave. I, 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 like, I like your whole story there. Uh, AMD Fury X overheated, exploded as it flew towards him as he threw it on his way to... And it flew... <laughs> Exploded as it flew toward me. He threw himself in the way. Oh, so he sacrificed himself for me. I like that one, too I might go with that one walking down the alley in the back one night We don't really know what happened. Just just came out with a scar and then you're supposed to tell there was something about you should have seen the other guy I think was the other option. Wow. There are a lot more. There's quite a quite a many responses quite many responses He fought an Arctic Panther. That's a good one there. Yeah, and if anyone asks just say you should have seen the other guy That's beautiful all right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this episode three of Probing Paul. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, you can hit like button down there because that's always a good thing to do. I have links in the description for my store if you want to buy uh, shirts, mugs, or glasses. I have mugs like this one as well as pint glasses and all those good things. If you want to ask me more questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll be coming back to this um, in particular before next month's Probing Paul. Really appreciate you guys all watching. Have a safe and wonderful weekend and we'll see you next time.